morning, everybody. I hope you all had a good weekend. Hi, Jeremy. Um, yeah, pretty decent weekend. Decent sort of all round, really. Um, good. Well, the start of another week. Important. To, yeah, morning, Jeff. Justin, hi there. Um, difficult week, really. I don't know how you guys... How's everyone finding the trading at the moment? Tough? There are profits out there. Morning, David. Yeah, it is. Justin, uh, yeah, slow, difficult. You, you, you're saying all the things that, you know, we feel in this office. Um, I was in my London office um, on Thursday. Uh, it's the same. You know, markets are a little bit sort of choppy. Uh, we've had a, we had a good run up when we had, yeah, difficult, Jeff. I know that I, I feel the same way. What we have to be careful of is just trading for trading's sake and just keep that discipline. Uh, you know, we're, we're here to let you know what we're what we do routinely. Uh, and remember, we can't make the markets. We can't make the mar markets easy to trade. But what we've got to do is to prevent trading for trading's sake just because we're sitting in front of a screen. Um, it, um, you know, no normally these sort of uh, moves, it, I, they call them, I think someone described the markets as undecided, in a state of flux. Uh, but it does make it sort of a little bit sort of difficult to trade because um, the, the direction that we, we like to take our cue from the sort of longer term intraday timeframes like the 240, but they do chop and change. And that's, that can be the sign of a, a you know, change in the trend. Uh, but that's something that we have to live with for now. Um, the politics aren't so much involved, but uh, the markets are a little bit confused, to say the least. Um, let's have a little review of what's gone on last week. Let me just open up the calendar from last week. Um, sorry, that's this week. Let's put last week up there just very quickly. Um, markets, yeah, as I said, undecided. I think the FTSE was off. Uh, yeah, well, Jeff, you're right. The, the, the trends are not clear, uh, and that's not because of anything you're doing or anything that anyone else is doing. It is the market. Um, you know, we had a... We had better data last week, certainly in the U.S. Anyway, not so good in the U.K. Better data in the U.S. And yet um, S&Ps, that's the Standard & Poor's, the very broad index, the closely watched index in the States, that was down 2.1%. FTSE was down about 1.3%. The euro, well, that actually slid about 80 or 90 cents on the week. So that's what, um, about 0.65%. Sort of Gold, um, that was down about $13 thanks to this sharp fall on Friday. And what's that, about 0.7%. Uh, crude, that sort of bucked the trend a little bit. I think um, uh, there are uh, a few concerns about supply issues, etc., coming into the uh, winter season where demand picks up. Um, that was up $1.98, which is up just over sort of a couple of percent. But as I said, really, the markets are undecided. Um, you get the good data, and yet the markets um, uh, tend to trade sideways to lower. We get bad data, and the markets rally. Um, nothing was um, provided to us in the shape of anything particularly positive from the likes of the uh, IMF meeting last week, the, the G7 uh, finance ministers. Uh, they came up with nothing, well, certainly nothing to soothe the, soothe the markets. Uh, but we did end on a sort of a positive note in the US. Um, I think it was the uh, something that rather confused the market. We had this uh, really positive unemployment claim. As you remember, I sort of said this time last week that, um, that we're looking for the usual sort of 370. Uh, quite a dip. So uh, a dip in unemployment claims, which is a little bit confusing and, and it was so far out that um, people have said, said it's a, there's a bit of an aberration and, and it turns out uh, the data for one state was missing. Um, I'm not sure whether that will have that much of an effect. Uh, and then of course um, PPI on Friday, that was a bit worse than expected but the, the key thing that really helped the markets or certainly helped it, it towards the close, 83.1 uh, on the uh, consumer sentiment. We like numbers, we like data. The reason why I like consumer sentiment. Um, this is the um, non-government. Uh, it's the, the one from the University of Michigan. Um, it's a good leading indicator as well because sentiment leads to you know, sales, which leads to turnover, which leads to profits, uh, which leads to a stronger economy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, that was very positive at 83.1. So the US tending to outshine uh, the Europe uh, 
uh, Europe and the UK. Uh, we had some appalling uh, data, as we all know, because um, it created some great trading opportunities last week, if you remember. We had the uh, manufacturing production and the trade balance were really poor bits of data. Um, we had uh, manufacturing coming in at minus 1.1 and the, the trade balance uh, a whopping 9.8 billion. So, uh, but that gave us some good opportunities. Um, nice profits on Tuesday. Uh, the negative uh, sort of market uh, had been set up at the 240, so the shorts were pretty nicely set up. Um, weird, really, though. You know, when you look at uh, what's going on, I think you know cable was dipping. Let's just put up cable here uh, because uh, it's amazing how far it had dipped. Yeah, look, see, 160.37, we're higher than we were. Let's just refresh this. I've probably got the wrong one up there. We're higher than we were when the market came off after that data, which is quite interesting. Um, anyway, that just shows you how bulletproof sterling is. Um, nothing's uh, going to change there, I, I guess. Now, uh, this week... You're probably all wondering what's going to help us this week. I mean, at the moment, we've had a, you know, weakish start. Um, FTSE was called, um, I guess, uh, not much worse than where it is now. Let me just get my window. Uh, yeah, FTSE is up seven and a half. Yeah, it's sort of flitting uh, between sort of down five, up five, up seven. Uh, nothing too much to shout about. Um, the FT has summed up what's going on this week quite nicely. A uh, little article here. Um, okay, uh, yeah, it's um, drifted off my screen. Let me see if I can pick it up. Uh, yeah, the economic outlook. And I, I think they've got quite a nice little sort of summary here. They said, growth overshadowed. Markets have gone cold on recovery prospects, um, which is quite interesting. They're saying that um, there is a, uh, the forecast for the third, the third quarter um, earnings seasons, that's Q3, uh, have been pretty disappointing. And I think they're weighing on the market more than uh, the economic data, which has been better in the US. Um, and um, that's something that um, it's a little bit wiring, but, you know, as I said to you all uh, and Jeff's comment at the beginning, Jeremy, Justin, you know, we know how uh, tough the markets are to trade when you have this sort of state of flux, um, despite the fact that the long term charts are looking like this. They have got a bit of direction. It is still choppy when I when we look at let's just refresh the daily on the uh, foot. So you can just see here. I mean, we, nice sweeping move earlier on in um, June, July, uh, July, August. Touched the bottom envelope, back to the top, and now we're we're stuck in an increase, a decreasing range, which is very sort of uh, uh, tough to trade. But at some stage, we're going to break out of this. And you can, you know, they often uh, something like this, you know, is referred to as a pennant, um, where you've got decreasing, just putting a trend line on here. And you can see the, let's just put it on again. Don't know whether you can see this. I don't normally like trends, trend lines. Uh, they're not the best things to trade off, but this signifies what's going on here. So whilst we're making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, now we're making higher lows and lower highs. It's possible that um, you know we're, we're looking at a pennant formation. So you see this sort of triangular formation and then possibly a breakout you would expect, normally the market tends to break out from where it's come from, um, which would be on the upside. But uh, you know, I have to say, when one looks at the, uh, the daily chart, um, let's just remove that. Let's go back to my pointer. Um, okay. When you look at the uh, daily chart, uh, and see where the sort of top of the range is in terms of the year. There doesn't seem to be a lot of room on the upside, and uh, one has this horrible feeling that uh, perhaps we've got a lot of good news factored in there, and we've got a few bumps in the road to uh, negotiate in the uh, coming weeks. Anyway, um, it's the U.S. election, and um, that's another thing that does impact the market because they tend to sort of, I don't manipulate the sentiment to a certain extent. The incumbent president doesn't want to have uh, a backdrop of poor economic data, etc. So uh, his troops and the Fed tend to sort of rally around and paint a, a reasonably uh, um, secure uh, or optimistic picture. Uh, after the election, God knows. Um, anyway, let's have a quick review of the data for this week. I'm blethering now. Um, on to 
if you want a red forex factory remember you can click from week to week so on the left hand side see the navigation uh, we were looking at last week obviously that's that's historical and um, we want to look at this week you just click on the week beginning the 14th well that's sunday we're 15th today um Let's just quickly review the data so we can be aware of what's going on in preparation for the trading week. Um, retail sales, a very important number actually coming out this afternoon at 1.30. Core, what they have is core retail sales. And if you click on the detail, you'll see that the core retail sales um, excludes um, uh, a food and energy, which can be, um, sorry, automobiles, I should say. Um, which are a sort of fairly volatile. Um, the core data, data is regarded as a sort of a more reliable um, uh, indicator. So two bits of data out there to, this afternoon at 1.30. We also have the Empire State uh, Manufacturing Index. The manufacturing in the States is, is, is important. It's more important than the manufacturing sector in the UK. The Empire State, the Empire State is New York. Believe it or not, it's a big state and it does a lot of manufacturing, but it's a good sort of... Um, pointer to the more important uh, Philly Fed index, which is coming out on Thursday. So two important bits of data uh, for manufacturing today and Thursday, um, both looking reasonably positive. I said that's sort of underpinning what's going on in the US uh, as numbers continue to improve. As I say, retail sales, we're looking for a figure of 0.6% uh, with the core figure, uh, sorry, uh, core figure at 0.6% with the month-on-month -month, uh, regular number at 0.7%, which is slightly lower than the previous month, but still relatively positive. Uh, Tuesday, we have our um, inflation data in the UK. God, uh, you know, we, we tend to keep on getting disappointed of late. Uh, it's quite a bold call from Forex Factory, 2.2%. Um, I've got a figure of 2.3% um, uh, as a forecast that we're looking at. Um, inflation broadly balanced was uh, Mervyn King's uh, description. Um, I, the suggestion for Mervyn King is that uh, there is no further uh, stimulus, monetary stimulus required at this time from his last comments, but depending on how this goes, if the um, uh, inflation data is stronger than expected. It does make, it does cause a problem for our doing more QE, quantitative easing. The problem is if you do more QE, you add supply, you add to the inflationary pressures, should inflation be a problem? I'm not saying it is, uh, but that um, uh, data is key for those looking at prospects of sterling. Uh, and remember, it does often give some great, great opportunities. So please check the 240 on Tuesday tomorrow morning and make sure that uh, you know where that's heading. So, uh, uh, you know, when uh, when we get these sort of major data announcements uh, in the UK, we've had some great trades off sterling of, of late. Um, US inflation data on Tuesday as well. Um, core CPI, you can see <laughs> they're in a, a slightly different sphere. Um, 0.2%, 0.4%, uh, still well under control. Um, energy prices were a, a factor in the climb uh, of, of late, but that uh, I think that's uh, sort of subsided a little bit. Um, but um, CPI is um, it's predicted to be plus 0.2%. Um, other data, Thursday, we're going to jump to Thursday, nothing much on Wednesday. The MPC minutes, there's nothing really to sort of to be gained from that. We don't expect uh, any fireworks there. They're all in agreement, as you can see, 0.09, which basically means everyone's in favour of uh, everything that's been discussed. Um, Thursday, we got GDP in China, um, something that um, doesn't affect us during the night unless you're up trading. Uh, Chinese GDP, that could have an effect on our stock uh, bond and currency markets uh, uh, when we get in six, seven o'clock in the morning. So uh, depending on what happens there, um, it is the world's uh, second largest economy. And, um, you know, there is talk that this slowdown is intensifying. We mentioned this last week um, after reporting a growth rate of 7.6 percent in the second quarter, a slightly slower growth rate of 7.4 percent is now predicted. Um, you know, but these are official figures from the from the Chinese state, um, and I know we tend to rely more on HSBC's uh, figures uh, uh, for for gauging what's going on in China. But nevertheless, that will be watched quite um, 
carefully. Uh, we have a summit again Thursday, Friday, the EU summit. Um, day one on Thursday, day two Friday. Um, you know, you can just imagine what they're talking about. Anyway, I'm not going to go over that because it's so boring. But um, peripheral zone woes, growth problems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Philly Fed, we've already discussed unemployment claims, weekly claims, usual stories rebound back up from 3.39, suggesting it was an aberration. And then finally um, on Friday, existing home sales. That's another bit of data to watch. So uh, that's it. Um, so manufacturing, retail sales and inflation data this week. Please keep your calendar handy. Good idea to print it out and have your ones highlighted like I do with a highlighter pen. Uh, and if you are trading, it's always quite useful to put a, a reminder on your outlook or something that can tell you it's 9.30 or 9, 9.25. Please be aware. Um, just little things you just need to, to plan for. Sometimes it's, you do, we tend to get to date and something, my God, what's going on? Shit, I forgot about this, that, and the other. Anyway, um, thanks for listening. Um, we remain optimistic. Don't worry if you are finding the markets difficult to trade. Uh, we can't make the markets up. The markets are what they are. Stick to your game plan. Do not be uh, distracted and um, you will be fine when the markets resume their trends. Um, I'm going to put you back on hold. Thanks for listening. We'll be back on Thursday this week for our um, second workshop of the week. Um, I'll just put you on hold and pass you back to the man. Cheers. Thank you very much.